Load shedding has sparked a lot of debates amongst people. We're all looking for a solution to power cuts that allows us to keep things at home and at work running somewhat smoothly. Now the word inverter is something that is often brought up. However, there's a lot of people that don't fully understand what an inverter is and how it works in conjunction with batteries, solar panels, and your main supply. Now your backup power in this sense is divided into three distinct parts. Firstly, how is power harvested? How are the batteries charged? This could be from solar or wind power, a generator, or your main supply. Secondly, would be storage of that power, which is in the form of batteries, either lead acid, gel, or lithium iron. And that's a whole nother topic, but safe to say that lithium iron is the way forward in terms of battery lifespan and maximizing the power you've just harvested. Thirdly, how do we convert or invert that stored energy into usable power? And that's where the inverter comes into play. Now, in South Africa, our appliances need 240 volts AC, but the energy that is stored in a battery is in a DC form. This is where variables come in. The larger the inverter, the more watts we can power. The more batteries you have, the more you can store. And the more panels you have, the more you can harvest, the quicker you can charge your batteries and still use that power. This is the Lalela 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter, which is a multi-function inverter charger, meaning we can charge the batteries by either one or a combination of the methods I mentioned earlier. This inverter is capable of supplying, yeah, you guessed it, a constant maximum load of 3000 watts at 230 volts, and it can supply a peak surge power of 6,000 watts for a brief 10 seconds. Now, pure sine wave is what's needed to power sensitive electronics, newer TVs, CFL, tube lights, fridges, freezers, anything with a motor or sensitive electronics. Now, this inverter comes with all the default settings already programmed, but it does give you the option of adjusting some of these settings. And you may find that one of the few settings that you want to play with is whether you want the inverter to prioritize charging the battery via solar or main supply. The inverter will also take a few seconds to switch back to mains as the unit will check that the incoming feed from your main supply is stable. And of course, it's got built-in overload, over temperature and short circuit protection. Now the built-in smart battery charger will also optimize battery performance. Even that has been looked after for you. Now being a 24 volt system, it means you either need two 12 volt batteries or one 24 volt batteries, such as this battery on the bench. This is usually sufficient to power lights, TVs, your internet connection, fridges, and so forth, both at home and the workplace. However, you do need to spend a bit of time and see how many watts you're using. Now, each appliance has a watt rating on it, and this is also true for light bulbs. Now, you'll need to add up the maximum amount of watts that you want powered at the same time and ensure that this is within the 3000 watt capability of this inverter. By using a power monitoring plug, I can see that a kettle is running just under 1800 watts, and this lamp, it's only using seven watts of power. Now this inverter unit is not a plug and play solution. It's a permanent fixture, and as such, it needs to be installed by a registered electrician and a certificate of compliance issued. Now for the sake of simplicity, I've built this bench rig just to show you how it all fits together. But remember, the inverter generates heat when it is working and it needs space around it for cooling, so it cannot be installed inside a cupboard. Now what we have here is the inverter mounted and a double plug point connected to the inverter. On the side, I have a 24 volt 80 amp hour lithium ion battery. And in the simplest of terms, when the power is on, the inverter takes AC power from the grid, changes it to DC and charges the battery. Now when the power goes off, the reverse happens. DC power is now fed into the inverter, converted or inverted to AC power, fed through your DB board to the plug points, and you wouldn't even know that there was a power cut. The switchover is seamless. The inverter has a built-in PWM charge controller, so you are able to charge the batteries with solar panels. But being a 24 volt system, the panels do need to be added as a 24 volt configuration. You can't just attach one panel at a time and you would need to pay attention to the watt rating of the panels you choose, how many strings are joined together. The LED display cycles between different parameters of information, such as are we on mains or on battery, how many volts are coming in and going out of the inverter, the amperage that we're drawing and so forth. 
Now using the menu is simple and each program setting is labeled with a number. These numbers of course are represented in the well-written manual and will explain what each state or setting means. I can set this to be a UPS, meaning that when the main supply is live, the inverter is basically there to arrest any power surges. Or I can set it to power my load as a priority before charging the battery, although this is only required if you have solar panels or a wind turbine connected. Now unfortunately, this inverter should not be permanently wired to power swimming pool pumps, geysers, ovens, kettles, and other high power, non-essential appliances. Well, it can run them, but if all the lights and the TV, the PCs are on, you may not have enough available wattage to run those devices. Your electrician will also advise you on what should and should not be connected. Now I know you're going to ask me, but Kev, how long does the battery last? Think of this as a backup water tank, for example. The larger the tank, the more water you can store. How you get that water into the tank, either by gutters to catch rainwater or filling it from municipal supply, that's the harvesting part. And the water pump, the more water you need, the larger the pump you need. Same here, the more power you need, the larger the inverter needs to be. But if you don't have much power stored, you're gonna use that power quite quickly. Now using this 80 amp hour battery as an example, if we were running at a full 3000 watts, which is a lot of power, this battery is gonna last no more than about 28 minutes. Reduce that to 900 watts and we're looking at two hours. My house uses about 400 watts when we're all asleep. That's the fridges, freezers, outdoor lighting, and of course my fish tank. So I can expect about eight hours of runtime. Double your batteries and you effectively double your storage and therefore you double your runtime. I must be honest here, as always, and tell you that I have been testing this unit for a few weeks here in the office, and it's performed flawlessly. It's a no fuss, simple to use setup with pre-programmed settings that are already loaded, which means you don't need to have all the technical know-how in the world. Get it installed and life carries on uninterrupted. Now Builders stocks the entire range of Lalela products, both in store and online at builders.co.za. For more videos like this, check out the blog on the website. Get to Builders, get it done.